There are two types of canoe trips, ones that involve portaging and ones that don't. These trips may involve traveling similar distances, but they differ in the amount and type of effort that you'll need to expend. Not only does portaging involve walking along a trail between bodies of water or around fast-moving water, but you'll also need to be carrying your gear and your boat as well. Wine Out Adventure wants you to feel confident that you can make it to any campsite, no matter how far your journey or how heavy your boat. There are three methods for portaging a canoe. First, the traditional style, using the yoke. Second, the tandem carry, resting the seat on your heads. Third, using the portage cart. In this video, we'll talk about each of these methods and show you a few different ways to both pick up the canoe and put it back down. It's worth noting that canoes are bottom heavy, so it can be a challenge to keep them steady once they've been flipped upside down. The most recognizable way to lift up the canoe onto your shoulders is the master flip, which uses momentum to fling the boat into position. We don't recommend that you try this for the first time without face-to-face -face instruction. It can be a challenging maneuver and if not executed properly, can result in damage to the boat or worse, you. Two people can work together to lift the boat off the ground and carry it in tandem. Just make sure that both people are lined up next to the seats and facing the same direction. With your hands that are closest to the boat on the closest gunnel and your hands on the far gunnel with your thumbs facing inside the boat, coordinate with your partner to lift and flip the boat to rest the seats on top of your heads. If you have a group with more than two people, carrying partners should have similar heights. It's easier when the boat is balanced on a level plane. Another method to lift the canoe up onto your shoulders is to lift one side at a time. Start by aligning yourself next to the stern seat with your close hand to the close gunnel and your opposite hand on the far gunnel. Lift the stern up and over your head in one swift motion, leaving the tail end on the ground. Once the stern is up, you can rest the seat on your shoulders briefly while you get your hands on the gunnels beside your shoulders and lift it up in the air to lock your arms. Then you'll carefully jump the boat up as you step forward and catch the gunnels again until you are aligned with the yoke and can let it rest in the proper carrying position. Now you can push on the gunnels to bring the canoe to a level position and begin walking. This method can be made easier and safer with a partner. You'll both stand at the bow of the boat on the same side, face to face. Place your close hand on the close gunnel and the other hand on the far gunnel so that you're mirror images of each other. In a coordinated effort, you'll lift the front of the boat above your heads while the stern still rests on the ground. Once you've lifted it up, the person closest to the front can lock their arms and hold it steady. For a solo carry, the other person can walk under the boat and settle the yoke on their shoulders. For a tandem carry, the other person can walk under the bow seat and support the weight of the boat while the first person walks around the canoe, lifts up the back and gets under the stern seat. While you're making your way down the trail, you may want to stop and take a break. In Keji, large wooden portage rests are provided every few hundred meters. You can square yourself up and place the bow of the canoe on the crossbar while letting the stern rest on the ground. Take this opportunity to swap bugs and take a drink before you carry on. The crook of a tree can be used in the same way. At the end of your portage, there are a couple methods for getting the canoe back on the ground. For solo carriers, place one hand on the yoke where it meets the gunnel and the other hand just in front of the yoke right on the gunnel. Take a wide stance with bent knees and take a deep breath. Carefully push up the hand that's on the gunnel and use the hand on the yoke to guide the boat to an upright position while rotating your body to rest the boat on your legs. Now you can reposition your hands and gently lower it to the ground. This method can also be done when two people are carrying the canoe by coordinating with a partner to flip the canoe in one swift motion to its upright position and lay it gently on the ground. The canoe can also be tipped backwards to rest the tail end on the ground, allowing both solo and tandem carriers to flip the canoe onto the ground without needing to support the full weight of the boat. This can be done with a partner supporting the bow and flipping the boat down together. Here at Why Not Adventure, we also have yoke pads available for rent. These are small foam pads that can be fastened to the yoke of a canoe in order to make carrying more comfortable. If one of our lightweight boats is unavailable, or if you don't feel comfortable carrying the weight of the canoe on your shoulders, a portage cart is another excellent choice for moving a heavy boat down the trail. Feel free to check out our portage cart tutorial for further explanation. Portaging can be intimidating if you lack experience, but anyone can pull it off. It allows you to access some very beautiful and isolated areas of wilderness. We hope that this video has helped you feel prepared to take your boat across land and water, and to enjoy all that Keji has to offer.